Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my last video we looked at the words of 13th century Arab chronicler al Adrizi, who stated there was also a sarcophagus inside the Queen's chamber, similar in style to the one in the King's chamber. He also indicates there was once writing on the ceiling, specifically the most ancient characters of the heathen priests, which does seem to imply hieroglyphs. We can't corroborate his words, but we have no real reason to doubt him. The great Flinders Petrie held him in high regard for his accuracy and reliability, and al had nothing to gain in making up such claims. He didn't embellish on the writing, and didn't say there was a mummy, gold, riches and gems. He simply stated his observations and moved on through the pyramid. If true, and the Queen's Chamber sarcophagus was like the one in the King's Chamber, we can assume it was made of granite, which was the same style as the ones used by Khufu's sons, the Crown Prince Kawab and Minjadef, as well as the one that was used by his daughter Merisank II. A rectangular granite coffer was very typical for Khufu's family, and for that reason, the one in the King's Chamber in my eyes is without doubt a typical 4th Dynasty sarcophagus. The sarcophagi of Khufu's children are decorated, not ornately like the one found in the Menkore Pyramid or the ones of later Egyptian history, but they did have some decoration. For the two mentioned princes, their sarcophagi only had a narrow band of hieroglyphs around the top. This is the red granite coffer of Prince Minjadef. It was found with a dismembered skeleton laid out on the lid. The tomb was looted. The inscription is asking the king, acting through the mortuary god Anubis, to give offerings to the prince, who is referred to as the hereditary prince, sealer of Lower Egypt, King's son Minjadef. This is the broken red granite sarcophagus of Kawab, the original crown prince and eldest son of Khufu, who died whilst his father was still alive. It again shows a narrow band of hieroglyphs. Look how badly worn the writing is, and this on a coffer inside a mastaba, with far less prominence than the Great Pyramid's King's Chamber. It is also worth noting that the 4th Dynasty princes were thought to have been wrapped and placed directly into the granite sarcophagus, not in a further wooden coffin inside. What we learn from these examples of 4th Dynasty granite sarcophagi is that the decoration is minimal on the coffer itself, even for important members of the royal family, and is limited to just a band of hieroglyphs. Therefore, I believe it is a fair assumption that Khufu's sarcophagus would follow suit. Of course, the King's Chamber sarcophagus has no Old Kingdom inscriptions of any kind, but this could be for two reasons. One, it did have inscriptions, but they have all worn away from hundreds if not thousands of years of exposure to treasure hunters, looters and tourists alike. The coffer does show a lot of damage including rounded upper edges, and this upper region is where we would expect to find a band of hieroglyphs. The second possibility is that this isn't Khufu's sarcophagus. He wasn't laid to rest inside the king's chamber, and the coffer was therefore not inscribed. Both options are plausible, and whilst I do think that option 1 is more credible, I do think we should consider or at least explore the possibility that Khufu didn't choose the king's chamber as his burial chamber. As I said in my last video, as well as my 90 minute presentation on the Great Pyramid, I believe the queen's chamber could well have been a contingency as well as having an important role in the pyramid's construction, something very complicated that I'll discuss in a future video. In Old Kingdom Egypt, life expectancy wasn't like it is today, as we can see from the death of Prince Kawab, and so if Khufu died before the Great Pyramid Master Plan was complete, before the bold vision of a granite lined burial chamber came to fruition, the king could still be laid to rest inside his pyramid which could have been hastily finished with local limestone, or given a flat top like a giant mastaba, not dissimilar to the tomb of Shepseskaf, the last ruler of the 4th dynasty. But of course the pyramid was completed, so there doesn't seem to have been a viable reason for Khufu to use the queen's chamber. Or was there? 
was the King's Chamber sarcophagus uninscribed simply because it was never used. The only reason I can think of why Khufu would not choose to be buried inside the King's Chamber is the damage that was caused during construction. Yes, major damage we can all see today. The huge granite beams that form the ceiling of the King's Chamber, as well as the huge granite beams that form the relieving chambers above, all have substantial cracks. And to break such large thick blocks of hard as one granite means there may have been a huge problem with this structure. Looking back at information that was published many years ago by French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin and he modelled the construction of the pyramid and from the estimated weight of the pyramid stone above the king's chamber and taking into account subsidence seen on the southern side of the chamber he was able to estimate when the damage was done. The king's chamber beams and those of the relieving chambers above all cracked before the pyramid was complete. Interestingly, there is plaster inside the cracks, which is thought to have been applied so the 4th dynasty architects could monitor the situation, to see if the cracks widen in time, or whether this damage was localised to one event. This 4th dynasty Old Kingdom plaster can still be seen inside the cracks today. As the plaster shows, the cracks did not widen, and the structure did retain its integrity, but would this be enough to put Khufu's mind at rest? Would he have put his full faith in his architects? Or would he have taken the safe option and make his contingency the Queen's Chamber his burial chamber? It is a lot of ifs, buts and maybes, but it is a possible reason why the King's Chamber may not have been used. The giant granite blocks cracking would have made a truly ear-splitting noise, loud enough to put the fear of God into everyone on the site, especially with the acoustics of the Great Pyramid they may have thought it was about to come tumbling down. Could Khufu have thought this was a sign? Were the ancient Egyptians superstitious? Or would the architects have known that such a thing could potentially happen? So let's go back to the hypothesis, the possibility that the Queen's Chamber was the final resting place of Khufu. And I'm not saying I'm behind the idea 100%, but as a researcher, in my opinion we should explore all possibilities. So, what evidence do we have in favour? Number 1. As stated, the King's Chamber did experience major damage, with subsidence on the southern side and also the cracked beams on the ceiling, which could have given the King real concerns about the structural integrity of the burial chamber. Number 2. A credible eyewitness account from 1245 AD says there were two sarcophagi inside the Great Pyramid. So why did looters only take the one from the Queen's Chamber? Was it inscribed with hieroglyphs? Was there a reason to take it? Did it look more special than the one in the King's Chamber? Of course, the King's Chamber sarcophagus could have been left simply because they couldn't get it out of the chamber. But as Larry from the American Institute of Pyramid Research said in a recent video, it can fit through if you turn it on its side. I do need to double check this myself. Number 3. The early account of al says there was writing on the ceiling of the Queen's Chamber. He made no such reference concerning the King's Chamber, implying the Queen's could have been decorated in antiquity. Number 4. From what we see today, the King's Chamber sarcophagus has no trace of hieroglyphs, and we would expect something after looking at the granite sarcophagi of his children. Of course, this can be explained by wear and tear over hundreds of years, with so many people entering the structure. Today, the lid is also missing, and as we can see, the coffer is broken, showing us that clear damage has been done. But is there anything else? Most people know that the Great Pyramid is built on top of a natural limestone mound, but nobody has successfully modelled the size of the mound below the pyramid. There are some models that say the lower part of the Queen's Chamber is actually built into the very top of the mound, and so, being laid to rest inside the Queen's Chamber means that technically Khufu could be laid to rest inside the earth, which is more common in ancient Egyptian burial practices. The burial chamber in the Khafre Pyramid is just below ground level, and the one in the Menkore Pyramid is also well below the ground. 
In contrast, the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid is way above the ground, and the subterranean chamber is in no fit state to receive the body of a king. But, according to some, the base of the Queen's Chamber sits within the natural limestone mound below the pyramid. And therefore, by being buried inside this chamber, Khufu could follow tradition and be buried within the earth. So maybe, you could argue the Queen's Chamber is the only possibility. Maybe the King's Chamber could never be the burial chamber. And there's more. Due to the rough state of the Queen's Chamber floor, and because so many people don't believe the Queen's Chamber could have been left in an unfinished state, many speculate the Queen's Chamber could have had a granite floor on top, which may have gone up to the height of the step in the horizontal passageway. This would have created a square opening into the chamber, just like we see in the King's Chamber. If so, to have dismantled it in antiquity does imply that this room was searched extensively, not as much as the burial chamber in the Red Pyramid, which as we can see has a gaping hole in the floor today, but still enough to have taken up the entire floor. Of course the Queen's Chamber may not have had a granite floor, as there is no written record or eyewitness account, and many people do disagree with this idea. So again, this piece of evidence can be easily argued. But even if there was no granite floor, the limestone floor slabs we see today in the chamber do have a number of strange features. There is this zigzag line on the floor that seems to run from below the northern shaft and heads directly towards the southern. There is this hole in front of the entrance, and to the right of Bob Briar in this picture, we can also see a square indentation, which you could say once housed a canopic chest, not dissimilar to the one found in the tomb of Khufu's mother, located in a shaft to the east of the pyramid. In the floor there are also more holes and marks, indicating there were structures inside, but whether these were construction related or for internal furnishings I don't know. Just to note, some say the Queen's Chamber is directly below the apex of the pyramid, due to the usual diagrams we see of the internal passages looking towards the west. Compared to the King's Chamber, it does sit in a more central position, but it's too far to the east to be directly below the apex. The style and shape of the Queen's Chamber, being lined with limestone with a sloping ceiling, is also very similar to the one found in the Khafre Pyramid. So, you can argue that the chamber is fit for a king. The two chambers do look very similar, and the original floor of Khafre's burial chamber was also made of granite granite that has been removed. Some also look at the corbelled eastern wall and the niche inside it as being perfectly placed for a car statue of the king, to look out into the chamber towards the likely position of the missing sarcophagus, again indicating it was designed to take the king's burial. The two shafts on the northern and southern walls were also closed up meaning the elements, sand from storms and also pests could not get inside, protecting any human remains inside the Queen's Chamber. The same can't be said for the King's Chamber. Although the purpose of the shafts does remain a mystery, and there are a number of ideas out there, some believe they were for the King's soul to travel through. Therefore, because the shafts don't open up into the Queen's Chamber, and also don't reach the outside of the pyramid, to some people that implies the Queen's Chamber is not a burial chamber. But this idea is actually unfounded, because you wouldn't actually need to have open shafts for this ritual, as seen by ancient Egyptian false doors. These are essentially carved blocks of stone, but were viewed as a threshold between the worlds of the living and the dead, and through which a deity or the spirit of the deceased could enter and exit. So, with that in mind, you could also argue that the Queen's Chamber is actually the more likely burial chamber, because the shafts in the King's Chamber are open, exposed to the elements, to sand from storms and also pests. Not a good way to preserve the King, unless of course casing stones did once cover up the exterior opening. As I've mentioned a number of times on this channel, there is also a hidden corridor behind the northern wall, running parallel with the horizontal passageway. 
Could this be leading to antechambers? Just like we see in the Red Pyramid, a place to store the king's great goods. The closed passageway is also filled with quartz sand, which wouldn't react with moisture. And the opening is likely through this block in the Queen's Chamber, which isn't load-bearing and also has a lintel over the top. So that's really all the evidence I can find in favour of the Queen's Chamber being the resting place of Khufu. Mark Lehner once said the Queen's Chamber would have been sealed off and transformed into a serdab, which is a room for the King's soul or car as found in other pyramid complexes and also inside Mastabas. It is a fair interpretation, but is it possible it's also the other way round? That the king's chamber was actually the serdab, or maybe a chapel or both? Serdabs were generally undecorated chambers, often found without inscription, although not always, and it did have a ritual function. It also acted as a storage space for royal goods, held a statue of the king, and was generally the easternmost chamber inside a system of passages. Serdabs in Old Mastabas were also generally higher up than the burial chamber. This description could perfectly explain the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid, if Khufu was laid to rest inside the queen's. Maybe the king's chamber was actually more like the pyramid's tomb chapel. In my opinion, the Queen's Chamber being the final resting place for King Khufu is something to be taken seriously, and shouldn't be dismissed when we try and unravel the mystery of the Great Pyramid. I will keep exploring the idea, and I'll make a follow-up video if I do find anything more. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.